Hi everyone and welcome along to this week's quick fix. So I had an idea, I went to a wedding yesterday and it was in a beautiful meadow and I suddenly thought this would, it was just so beautiful and I, I sort of took a few photos of it and then I thought it'd be cool to do like a watercolour snapshot of that moment and I know that's just like landscape painting but I thought what if we did it in a sort of almost like Polaroid sized painting. So what I've got is I've cut out some watercolour paper 10 by 7 times 8.8 centimetres is uh, roughly a Polaroid camera um, photo shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my um, my one stroke brush to create a sort of square shape. So leaving that extra bit at the bottom like a Polaroid with buff titanium. So this is very, very pale and dilute, barely visible but I'm doing it freehand because I think that's a bit more charming and I just thought this would be a really cool way to do like a nice little card that goes with a wedding gift or something um, it was just just painting a nice little uh, scene a little vignette so what I've got here is I've just done a, a little square of buff titanium I'm going to create a little landscape of the scene I saw yesterday. So I've got some um, some dilute Payne's grey, which I'm going to put sort of halfway across the piece. And then I'm going to take some sap green and just bring that in down in there. I've got a few other greens going on. I've got hooker's green here, a little bit more vibrant. Just trying to get sort of faint colours in the distance and then slightly stronger colours down in front. And my plan is, what we're going to do is create a, the field of dandelions that I saw yesterday. So I'm just scribbling that, those green colours into the, the shape. And of course, with the rest of the page being dry, that means that the water is going to hold the shape of the of the colour. Now there were a lot of dandelion clocks in the field so what I'm going to try and do is I've got a little bit of kitchen paper. Yes there we go and I'm going to just blot out the colour where I can and then if I make a slightly smaller, smaller one as well, it's a bit of a race against time. In the distance let's see if we can get a few that's pretty cool isn't it blotting out the colors it doesn't even matter if they're in the distance if they're smaller because it's just all about different sizes and different shapes and maybe I can sort of try blotting out the bigger ones and just make them even bigger Anyway, that's what we want. We want a few shapes blotted out with kitchen roll. And then I, what I also want is a bit of cadmium yellow, a bit of cadmium orange. And I want to place in some dandelions. So those ones will be smaller in the distance. And then larger in the foreground. We're gonna wait for this to dry. And then we're going to paint in a bit more detail. And I just think it's going to be really cool. And uh, that's what it's all about, isn't it, really? Making something cool. With these dabs, just a little word to the wise is don't sort of go messing up the or disturbing the, the, the colours in the background, as in the, the initial wash colours, because we want to keep things vibrant and fresh. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Um, but what's a nice idea is I cut out a few more. So I'm going to just create a few more little sort of meadowy examples and then we'll, we'll finish them off. For this one, I just used diluted Payne's Grey for the back and some sap green and then a bit of Payne's Grey sap green for the base. And then I just blotted out with my kitchen roll 
blotted out a little spot while still wet and put a little bit of cadmium yellow, a very tiny little bit. And now we've got a nice sort of meadow with the sunshine. But I just wanted to come back in on this one and paint in some poppies. I thought a field of poppies would be cool. So it's still damp, still very damp, but some poppies. Just trying to be really careful not to overwork the colours. Remember different sizes. And there we go, that one is ready to dry too. The last one I'll do is uh, starting with Payne's Gravel. I've added a tiny bit of cobalt blue deep in there. So this brush is brilliant for the control of nice sharp corners and straight lines. It's also great for flower painting. You should check out, um, I've done a few tutorials with this new bloom brush set. But it's really important that your washes start off really, really dilute and not like completely soaking on the page either. I'm going to place in a little bit of a sunrise and that's it. <laughs> that's all I need. And then I'm going to have some green, sap green just coming up the sides. And it's always good to put just a little bit of darkness sort of in the corners, just frames it nicely. And a few dabs of that. And we're going to do this one as a sunflower field. So we just let it dry a few minutes just to get the, the wetness just a little more under control and then we'll put some sunflowers in. I love how these washes sort of create landscapes already for you. Right, let's just place in sunflowers. So you can see the page is still a little bit wet, a little bit damp, but it's dried just a bit longer than the other ones to allow us to get in some sunflowers that are just a little bit more defined. And then obviously just a few smaller yellow dots. And once we, everything's dried, all we need to do is add in just a few little stems. Now our little snapshots are dry. It's really important, I think, not to try and do like too much detail on these. The whole point is that they're simple and, you know, done in a sort of naive fashion. So what I'm just gonna do is add in some basic stems on these dandelions and then I think it's just all about sort of framing it nicely so I'm doing some leaves so dandelion leaves I like sort of doing a triangular sort of brush marks down the side of the leaves I'm doing this with my size zero brush. I'm just gonna add, yeah, just a few extra little sort of grasses in the bottom. And then if you want, just a few extra little bits here and there. But I think that is going to do us nicely for the dandelion one. For poppies, I think a fairly similar, simple approach. But I'm going to use my rigger brush this time. And I'm going to 
sort of join up the tallest ones actually in the front. Unless they're really, really tiny. This is what the rigger brush is really brilliant for. And then with my uh, size zero brush, I think I'll sort of come in again from the bottom and do some sort of poppy, like the little sort of frond leaves that grow out of the poppies. So that's just a case of doing some little tapered lines and C curves coming off them. And then of course have some coming out the base just to frame it. And then for the last but not least, whoops, the sunflower. I'm gonna take some burnt sienna. Oh, we've got some nice dark burnt sienna Payne's grey mix. Anyway, cool. So just dabbing it on, making our sunflowers. You know, this is lovely, playful, fairly childish watercolour and I love it. I added sap green stems with the rigger brush and then some leaves just using the size zero brush in sap green and again just sort of adding them along the base and just a little bit smaller in the distance and it's amazing how something really quite sort of you know a lot of people would say oh that's really childish really rubbish but it it brings a lot of joy. And I love it. I'm really pleased with it. So just a few extra little sort of leaves and then I'm going to just add a bit of the darker colour sort of down the front. Maybe a few little extra sort of grasses or things. Sometimes you just want a different shape. Different colour, different shape. And there we have some gorgeous little watercolour gift cards, little nature snapshots. Really, really simple, but I think you'd agree, rather effective. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.